What's up everyone, today we're taking a look at a very hot topic in security, how to secure a I was going to be going over the OWASP top 10 for LLMs. That's a lot of acronyms, so we're just going to take a minute to go over piece by piece what every one of those things are. First, OWASP, the Open Worldwide Application Security Project. Essentially, what it is, is a group of super nerds that volunteer their time and energy and efforts to securing the world and creating best practices for developers to build websites and applications that we can trust and rely on every single day. And what OWASP recently did was they have a top 10 list that is extremely popular in the worlds of security and how to secure applications. They did that now for LLMs, which are large language models. Now, this is what most people mean when they say AI is they're referring to something like ChatGPT or Google's Bard, which are both large language models. And what these are is to really boil down a lot of complicated engineering work are just tools that take large data sets of language and interpret them to create relationships between different contexts. LLMs are the basis for what most companies are now launching their own AI products. Because this is such a new market and there are so many companies rushing headfirst to go to market as quickly as possible into creating these AI products, there's a huge demand for them and a lot of developers rushing out products that are potentially at risk. In response to this, that OWASP group of super nerds created their top 10 for large language models. This was done by over 500 engineers, different people in the industry with all sorts of different backgrounds to really try to narrow down and come up with what are the security priorities that we need to look to achieve as security professionals, as end users, just what can we do to keep ourselves safe? This is V1 of the project, and there's a link below to where you can go to contribute and partake in this community development to try to build secure applications. For the rest of the video now, we're gonna walk through each one of these top 10 items and give examples and how to prevent. And really, if you want more resources on this, you can read the full report and really dig into the details of what's there as well as a lot of great resources. With that in mind, let's hop right into the content. First top 10 is prompt injection. Now, this is the topic that when it comes to AI, definitely gets the most amount of security attention. It's the most intuitive example for people. This is where you can go to ask the AI for information, try to manipulate it such that you are grabbing data that you shouldn't have access to. So pretend there is a support chat bot, which is something a lot of companies are building now, where you can ask the support bot for how can I reset my password? And it might walk you through step-by-step step how to do that. And the way that this technology works is it's using the LLM LLM and connecting that with some kind of internal data like your knowledge base article and using that to surface to the user how to accomplish what they asked the chatbot to do. Now, the flaw in this system is if that chatbot has access to actual production data. Now, this is where, let's say that the developer didn't fully segment the things that that support bot has access to. And instead of asking it how to reset my password, I ask it for the hash of another user's password. In this case, if the LLM was rushed out and doesn't have segmented access between the production data set and actual databases where it could look up this information versus just the minimal information it needs to do its job, Job, the LLM could go in and grab that sensitive information. This is one example that comes up in the context of applications, but as an end user, another example is if we use a web extension that crawls websites and then tells it to summarize the data, this is a common use case for many users looking to speed up their workflows with AI, get some kind of summary of web pages. If the web page is set up to maliciously send data to your summarizer plugin that might have access to other information about you, it can actually use your browser to communicate back to the malicious server without you ever knowing because prompt to your web extension has been injected 
with this malicious content from crawling the website. So these are two examples of what's probably the most prevalent thing, which is attacking the prompt itself with malicious data. So ways to prevent this are first to segment the data access. It's really important across all of these top 10. You'll see a consistent theme to segment data properly to make sure that the service running the LLM has access only to what information it needs to get the job done and doesn't have over-provisioned access to things. And as an end user, to be careful with what plugins you're using that you're not giving it more data than you really need to. Second, we should be really careful about where users can access prompts. This is something when we think about really threat modeling in general, it's about user access and where the user can manipulate things on the site, on the application directly. So if you're using LLM on the back end to do some kind of data standardization or surface specific results to a user, maybe summarize content that your application itself has developed, you don't need to be as careful with this particular attack. But if you just have a chat-like interface where the user is directly inputting something, that's where to be really careful. Third, we can think about the user trust. Thinking about when you're giving a user access to information via a chatbot, ask yourself, if a user asks for this information, should we ask for a form of authentication again? Should we ask the user to re-authenticate to really make sure that if this information is getting surfaced to the user, that we have the right person, that we're validated? Finally, if you're an end user, only use AI from services that you know and trust. Be careful on even ChatGPT's own plugin store where things can change. It's a very new, fresh thing. Be careful about the kinds of plugins you're installing and how you're interacting with them. Be really careful with browser plugins and those types of tools that are very new and making sure that you're not having data leaked accidentally. So that was prompt injection, which was really focused on injecting information into the LLM in order to manipulate the kind of response that you want to get. Second is insecure output handling, which is very closely related in that it's really focused on getting insecure data out of the language model or getting it to manipulate the output of the model in some way that allows you to further your attack as the attacker. And the patterns in the examples here from OWASP really go into two categories. The first is running commands on servers due to a trust relationship. So this is if someone's running an LLM in an insecure way and I tell it to run the following command, bin bash, uh, start a remote shell to my machine, printing different SSH keys or whatever I can try to get my hands on. If I have a way that I can get the LLM, if it is programmed in such a way that the output is not sanitized and it just runs directly onto the server, this is the kind of attack where the because the output is not checked to make sure that if a command is being formed, it's being properly run and cleaned before it runs. That's where the output itself is being used as part of the attack. A similar function, the other pattern for this, is if you have some sort of LLM that is outputting JavaScript, the JavaScript output, if it's just coming directly into a user's browser window, can be easily manipulated to do cross-site scripting attempts where there's JavaScript running on the user's local machine and they're totally unaware of that. The two ways to prevent this are first to never blindly trust the response from an LLM no matter what. And this is because LLM responses are by their nature inconsistent and you cannot trust that the thing you're getting out of it is blindly going to be something that is what you want. And so you really wanna to try to limit the response to as small a set as possible. And the second way to prevent is to never surface LLM responses directly to users. So you always want to encode the output before it hits a user's window so that they are not getting injected by some kind of JavaScript that might be flowing out of the LLM to your browser. Third is training data poisoning. This type of attack is what a lot of users are afraid of based on the idea that the large language model is using the input to train its own data or adding it to the data set. This is something that a lot of people are afraid of happening with their own data, where, for example, if I was on a meeting and my video was being recorded, it's being used to train the model to do things based on our meeting content, which is then taking my proprietary information, which is one example of poisoning the training data, right? The, the large language model is developed based upon this underlying data. And if I'm poisoning that data set with malicious input, then I have the ability to ultimately manipulate the output. And so beyond just my own personal data concerns around that, the concern from an attacker perspective here is that you're really able to manipulate the output by training the input. 
And so the most important way to prevent this is what a lot of companies are doing, which is not using user inputted data as tempting as it might be to do so to train your large language model. Now, these models are largely based upon historical data that already existed on the internet. And so it's really just about avoiding the temptation to further use that user data because of how it might manipulate the output. Two other things to do are to verify the source of your training data because it might be tempting to just crawl GitHub, find a large source of data that you're looking for to really consider where you're getting your text from, where you're getting your data from in order to make sure that it's from a good and trustworthy place before you're using it to train your model. Finally, you want to make sure that all of your user data is really sandboxed separately so that you're not intermingling user data as what you're training the model on. You instead want it to be totally safe, preferably public information that you're training the model on so that you don't have to worry about the output getting manipulated based upon things that are changing. Fourth, we have model denial of service attacks. These are denial of service attacks are obviously where people use manipulate some function in the system to deny the availability of the service. Now with large language models, this is usually accomplished by taking advantage of the maximum care character limit that the model is able to use to interpret. Even though there's a hard shutoff at the actual max character limit, you might have users who try to flood your system by posting a series of high velocity messages that are near that maximum limit to really force the language model to its maximum context and work overload on that high processing intensity output for a long significant period of time. So an example of a mitigation of this is how ChatGPT, as they're rolling out their models, have that maximum daily message count to try to avoid overloading the model as they're spinning up additional resources. So it's important to restrict the sizes of your inputs and your outputs to try to think about what you want your context window to be for discussions with the user, as well as to apply some kind of rate limiting like anything else to not allow users to just endlessly spam the attack, to not make it an open API where they can just sit there and hit it all day with their questions. These are all things that are really important to try to limit. And really a theme we'll see across this is to try to minimize the tasks that you're asking the AI to do to a bunch of smaller ones instead of these larger ones that can be more easily manipulated in different ways. This is a common theme in security generally, but especially in relation to LLM, is supply chain vulnerabilities. This is where you use unvalidated third-party models as an attempt to make your development go more quickly. An example of this is there's a public GitHub repo called Awesome LLM with thousands of stars attached to it. That's a great resource for having a lot of papers and LLMs that are available for you to use yourself. And it's just important to be careful when you're using resources like this to validate, first of all, that you're using something that's from a trusted source. And second, if it makes sense for your business to fork something like that internally and not rely on the public supply chain directly for it so that if an attacker were to take control of one of these LLMs, you're not susceptible to directly inheriting all of the uh, dependencies with it. So some ways to prevent it. The first is doing vulnerability scans on your dependencies. This category of tools are called SCAs, which is software composition analysis. You'll also see it called open source scanning or SBOM generators, um, where it's creating a bill of materials for your software. All of these tools exist to look for vulnerable dependencies that you may be inheriting. This is the first open AI data breach was actually from a Python library that was itself compromised. And so this is already something that's been a threat to providers of LLM. And it's important to be vigilant the way you're both using third party sources, packages in your LLM development, as well as your LLMs themselves. So only use trusted machine learning models and be really careful with marketplace third party plugin that you have no visibility into who's really hosting those things. Sixth, we have sensitive information disclosure. This is probably the one that was the most common in what you would see on Twitter during ChatGPT's rise to popularity, where you have people jailbreaking ChatGPT to ask it for sensitive information that it's not supposed to disclose to users, things like how to build weapons that it shouldn't know how to do, or asking for specific people's addresses. And this is where uh, something you might have to be more careful, like let's say you're a pollster that's using an LLM to summarize polling data, you would have access to a lot of information about people that are both individuals as well as their addresses and other PII that you want to be careful about how you're surfacing to them. And so it's really important to sanitize outputs, be aware of what data 
you have and to really try to limit the kinds of data that your LLM has access to. So if you give it direct access to the internet or have it crawl web pages that you're not really sure of the data that's on them, it could be picking up additional metadata that you don't want it to reveal to users. So it's important to try to limit the types of questions you're uh, surfacing answers to as well as think about what sensitive data does it potentially have access to that it could surface to someone that they wouldn't even be prepared to uh, answer. So something like a shared family medical account where there might be sensitive information about someone else on the family and then it's generating output that you wouldn't want to share across the entire account. Seventh is insecure plugin design. And this is not referring to plugins in terms of the kinds that are available on like the OpenAI marketplace, but instead plugins that you might be using internally with your large language model in terms of helping it to craft different strings or to crawl websites. So an example is user inputs might be used to then be translated into URL generation so that the LLM knows what website to go to to gather the information that it's trying to receive. And this is where the LLM plugin a lot of times can implicitly trust a lot of different services or different data within the services and really have an ability to access more data than it should. And so it's important to just verify your plugins and where you're getting them from very similarly to the supply chain vulnerabilities, as well as to parameterize your inputs. Now, this is something that is important to preventing SQL injection. And all that this really means is that you're not allowing users to enter the full search query itself. Instead, their query is nested inside of a very specific subtask within the prompt for the LLM so that the user doesn't have unfettered access and what they're able to manipulate is actually very minimal compared to the overall paradigm. Eighth is excessive agency. This is where the LLM has the ability to do more than it's absolutely required to be able to do. A very common example would be that your model only needs access to read from a SQL database, but you might've accidentally given it full admin access because maybe all of your services just run with full administrative mode. What you need to be careful of is that if the LLM has access to write to the database, because LLMs are unpredictable in their output, you could easily have a situation where it decides to do very large, dangerous things like deleting data from your databases. Another example is access to sensitive things like deleting user accounts or sending emails, this type of functionality, it's important to try to ask for user input and put a human in the loop before uh, the machine just executes the code. So if you have a plugin, for example, that summarizes email contacts, that LLM by default will have full access to everything about that user's mailbox. So it's important to instead voluntarily remove that access so that you don't have to worry about sending emails on the user's behalf or something similar. If you do you have sensitive data like that, ask the user's permission before it does it. Something like, are you sure that you want to send this email? Ninth is over-reliance. And this is where you are relying on an LLM for things that it can't do, like provide trustworthy information, design highly complex systems, where you're really putting too much stress on what you are expecting out of the language model. So some examples are auto-generated news articles, auto-generated software, web pages. If that entire process is happening end-to-end, generated by LLMs without any kind of validation or trust, that's where you're really asking for problems. And this was a very comical issue recently with the World of Warcraft subreddit made a fake character named Glorbo that they said was coming to World of Warcraft because they suspected that news generators were scraping Reddit and using generative AI to summarize the comment thread and post an article about it. And sure enough, the article was soon published saying that Glorbo was coming soon as a character. This is an example of what can happen when these LLMs are just set loose with no human validation or anything that exists in the meantime. It's important to try to, again, separate things into as small subtasks as possible and try to use some kind of human voting or checking with other external services before you go to publish or actually use something generated by an LLM. And finally, number 10 is model theft. And this is someone stealing your model itself. Now, the protections around this are a lot more obvious in terms of just using RBAC around your model making sure that it's running in ways that are secure, that people don't have access to it, that you are logging access to it in your SIM, firing the security alert controls, really to protect the intellectual property that is your LLM. Just as important as the intellectual property coming out is the fact that an attacker could take advantage of it to gain further information about your system to continue to attack it. Common practices like recording your API keys, securing them, making sure that you have scanning in place so that they aren't posted publicly are also good ways to prevent unauthorized access 
to your LLM. That was it for today. I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot. Uh, please like, favorite, and subscribe this video. Let me know if there's anything I can help you with. I'd be happy to answer questions or take a deeper dive. You can reach me at latio.tech, our website, and I'd be happy to connect with you on LinkedIn as well to provide any additional information. That was the OWASP top 10 for LLMs. Very grateful for the OWASP organization in putting this out on really the basics of how to get started securing this new field and keep us safe from the robot overlords.